Hey guys, welcome back to Dark Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop we are going to be making a bushcraft sheath for the Woodlore clone bushcraft knife that I made in the last video. So this sheath is going to be a little bit different from the previous sheath that I made for my last kind of bushcraft style knife. Uh, this one's going to have a dangler on it. Um, it's going to either be able to be worn as a dangler or a regular on the belt. Um, it'll also have the bottom be shaped a little different so that way you can wear it and customize it and maybe tie it down to your leg different ways so that way as you're out in the bush camping, backpacking, um, that way it'll fit you and you can kind of customize it to fit and work exactly the way you want it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a template. So let me show you how I do that. First thing you wanna do when you're making a template is just take your piece of paper and fold it in half. Because we're dealing with a folded sheath, so you only have to do one side. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm going to center the spine right on the fold. And maybe come in just a smidge, so the thickness of the blade. And then I'm just gonna roll the knife handle over on the thickest spot of the handle. and then I can trace around my knife. And we really only have to do the one side of the knife because this is the side that we're going to have to account for on the next step when we're measuring the welt. So we're measuring out the distance where we're gonna kind of incorporate the welt. And I have to remember the leather has to come back around the thickness of the handle and come together and then have enough room to stitch it together. So I'm gonna go out about an inch from my widest point here, um, which puts me just about a little over two and a half inches. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark up here at two and a half inches. And then we'll come down to the blade and we'll mark out from the widest part of the blade an inch. And that puts us at just under two and a half inches. So it's only about a quarter inch difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and run down here and I'll make my same mark there. Now, I'm, you can see I'm making, I'm not following the curve of the blade because I wanna incorporate um, just a wider part down here that's going to have a hole in it here that'll be able to attach a lanyard to the bottom of my sheath. The, in, the inner width of this is about an inch and an eighth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a piece of tape on the back of this. I want my handle to come up just above this rivet on top, maybe another eighth of an inch or so. So you can see I actually trimmed my template now. Um, and I just trimmed it off, I have a piece of tape on the back so I can make some adjustments now put this where I want it. So I'll just make my adjustment until this uh, paper template is about where I want. So again, I want it about an eighth of an inch or so. This leather to come up. Now with this sheath, it's gonna fold like this and the belt loop is gonna fold back. Now that will fit on my right hip um, because I'm right-handed, so I want it over here. Now if I were left-handed, I'd want it on the opposite side. So with this being what's gonna be the outside here, this is the inside of my sheath. So if I'm right-handed, I want this side facing up. So I marked an R here and an L here. If I was left-handed, I'd want the opposite side, so I put my L facing up. Um, so being able to see your marks, then you know which side to trace for a, a right-handed or a left-handed sheath. So we're gonna go ahead and trace around this and then we'll cut it out.
I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center now of my sheath on the top and bottom because I want to cut a groove, a couple grooves down the middle to help the uh, spine fold around the blade. I need to cut out some leather for my welt. So I'm just gonna trace around the outer edge of this and then I'll trim this off and then trim the inner edge where my blade will rest. Now you can see I have this template part just underneath of my welt leather. I'm just lining it up and making sure that everything looks right. I'm going to have the handle coming out right with the belt loop and down in just past here a little bit. And then this is my mark I want. So I need to, I'm just tracing the blade on the welt here and then across the bottom. This is how far down I want my blade to sit. And then I'll just come out. And the welt has to be able to fit inside here, the widest part. So that's where I'll come out to about my half inch. And then I'll just follow back about that same distance from the edge. So at the bottom of your welt, you always want to trim off some. So this line here is my middle line. So right now, if I fold this, it's going to go all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and mark and trim off about another maybe eighth of an inch or so to make sure that I have a hole in the bottom of my sheath. Now that you want that there, just in case you ever, you're ever in water or anything, you actually get water or any moisture inside your sheath, it'll have some somewhere to escape so you don't have an actual pocket holding that water. So we'll go ahead and trim that off and then that should account for that. Once this is glued, obviously I won't be able to see inside to see where my welt is. So to be able to know where my welt is once I've glued everything up to be able to do my stitch lines, because I want to do two rows of stitch lines, one that follows the blade and one that goes on the outer edge. And so to know where that is, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just cutting out my paper template so I'll be able to lay it on top later and have my stitch lines. So at this point in the order of operations, I want to uh, prepare my belt loop for stitching in the back. And to do that, I want to skive this leather down. So skiving is the word for thinning out leather. Uh, I don't have a, scarf, a skiving tool, but I do have a really sharp blade that I just made. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to start maybe about an inch up or so, and then just taper evenly down to about half the thickness of the leather. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, put it where I want it, and I'll mark it off so that way I know what area to avoid while I'm dying. So now I'm going to cut a couple pieces of leather to be my dangler strip and my fire steel loop. So the fire steel is going to be about an inch and a half 
uh, by maybe three or four inches, enough to fold over and stitch inside along the welt. And the fire st and the dangler loop will be about 10 inches or so, enough that I can fold it three times and put my snaps on to make the dangler. So I just picked up a couple cool new toys this morning before we started shooting today. Um, I got a new edge beveler, which you saw me just use to kind of trim the edges of each of those two pieces. I also picked up some dye daubers, so I'll be able to use these to apply the dye, which will be fun. And the last thing I got was some gum tragacanth. Now gum tragacanth is an application that you put onto the flesh side of leather to smooth it out as well as your edges when you're, um, when you're burnishing your edges of your leather, so it helps to you know, keep all those edges down. So we'll be able to use all these today in the build. So you see, I'm just gonna go ahead and dye these edges now. And I'm gonna burnish the edges as well. So I'm gonna use my gum tragacanth to burnish the edges and see how that works. So it'll be the first time I get to use it. All right, we'll go ahead and let these dry for a minute or two. Make sure they're nice and dry before we do the second coat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my second coat on. And you can see I put my D-ring on now because I don't wanna forget to put that on once I actually glue it. I'll go ahead and let this second coat get tacky on both sides and then I'll 
stick them together. Just adding a little bit of water to make this bend a little smoother. and start marking my holes now for the stitches for the belt loop. Just laying down a line. This will help the stitches and the, the thread to actually sit down inside the leather, which will help preserve it for longer. Wait, it's sitting down below a little bit, keep it from getting rubbed and, uh, and worn out. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with dye again to clean up all that light leather. This is artificial sinew, which is what I'm going to use to do all my stitching. Just got to find the end of it. There we go. So just pull it a length and then I'm going to do a saddle stitch. I mentioned it just a minute ago, but I'm going to do a saddle stitch. So what a saddle stitch is, is you have a length of cordage with a needle on both sides. So the way you do your saddle stitch is you run one needle through and you center your line. So I have my two ends of my line evenly centered. So you're going to go in through your first hole from one side, pull it out. And then from the other side, I'm going to go back through that same hole and pull it out the other side. And then I'll pull that tight. And I'll continue doing that. So what's that doing is going up and through both sides in the same hole. So that way you get an even, uh, you get your stitches on both sides of your leather. And that's the saddle stitch. You just continue all the way around and then we'll overlap at the end and do a few final twists before we burn it and finish it off. To finish off this stitch, I'm actually going to go back over some of my existing stitches and I'm actually going to go all the way across the top again and then that'll be bound tight enough and then I'll just pull each end out, trim it off just a little bit and then burn it and that'll hold it perfectly good. I need to leave a space for my fire steel loop. Now this is gonna be like this, but I want to prepare all this separately. I'll do all my burnishing and everything and put this in at the end. So I just need to cut out a space for this loop.
So I'm gonna go ahead and wet this now, get it nice and saturated. I'm gonna form it around my fire steel. So this will squeeze the leather down and actually flatten it out more so then it'll be closer to the size of one width of leather rather than two widths of leather, which is what I need it to be when it's inside of my welt. And this still fits in nice. That should be good. All right, so this is now both sides are tacky, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them together. So at this point, you just wanna be careful you put it down in the right position because this is designed to attach and not move. It's a little bit forgiving, but you wanna try to just get it in the best space you can on the first try. So because I just picked this up today, I wasn't really thinking about it, uh, but I am gonna use this on the inside of the leather as well. So the entire inside of the sheath, sheath I'm going to use the gum track acanth, and this will just help to bind all of those uh, leather fibers together and just give it a little bit more protection on the inside and also kind of add a little bit more barrier for dirt and oils and water as well. As it gets inside there, it will add more of a barrier. So I'm gonna coat the whole inside of the sheath with the gum track acanth and then burnish it all down. All right, now we're just gonna put it all together and just line up our sides. I have my belt loop now folded into three, and I'm gonna go ahead and set where I wanna put my two snaps. Just tap this down a little bit. About here. And the second one we're gonna go out maybe about an inch or so from that one. Just gonna go ahead and punch all four of my holes, and this is the same size as the post for my snap. I'll do the bottom half of my snap first. So I have my anvil, put that on here, and bottom half is going to be that part.
we're gonna go ahead and pull off all these clamps. This should be plenty secure now. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the sander. I'll clean up all these edges and then we'll finish the edge before we put the fire steel back in. And the reason why I'm doing that is this way I can kind of access everything. I can burnish everything and dye it all, get all the way up to these edges where the fire steel loop is going to meet and not have to worry about trying to get my tools inside in that little, that point where the two uh, pieces of leather come together. This way I should be able to prepare everything really nicely now. I'm gonna go ahead and dye my edges now. Again, I'm still waiting to put my fire steel loop in till the end. So I'm gonna dye everything and finish the edges now. And we'll do a final cone of gum tragacanth across the edges for burnishing. Now this squish this leather down nice and tight. And that'll fit inside our welt really well. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by making my stitch line uh, all the way around the edge, and then I'll put my template on. And this just shows me where my actual welt comes to in the inside so I can stitch here.
So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up now with my saddle stitch and I'm gonna clamp this into my wood vise. Um, I'm gonna start at the top corner and work down around and then back along the curve of the blade and finish up right where the two meet. Um, and for my artificial sinew, I'm gonna cut a lot of extra line. Um, you know, obviously if you go through, you can't add any on. So if you make yourself around and you didn't have enough off to start off with, then you're gonna have to go back, pull your stitches out and start over. So I'll give myself a lot of extra line, make sure that I have enough to go all the way through all of my stitches. All right guys, well the last thing you saw me do was finish up the stitching and it turned out really well. Last night overnight, I actually wet molded the sheath around the blade. And so what I do is I just completely saturate the sheath in water. And then something I did this time, which I haven't done before and it actually worked out perfectly, is I covered my knife completely in oil before I wrapped it in cellophane. So I always wrap my knives in cellophane to protect them from water getting in from wet molding but this time I covered it in oil, wrapped it in cellophane and put the knife in. And that just added that little bit extra security to make sure that there was no uh, chance of water penetrating in through the cellophane and getting on my newly finished knife blade, which uh, worked out perfectly. And this sheath formed really well, so it's fitting really nicely now around the blade. I'm gonna go ahead and punch my hole now and I just want to give myself just a small mark so I know where I'm going to do it. And this is the lanyard hole that'll go through the sheath. Dyes occasionally can dry out your leather a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and soak everything, saturate everything in neat split oil now. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit now and just let the oil soak in completely and then I'll do my last coat of finish, which is the Carnuba cream. So everything nice and saturated now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just let this Carnuba cream dry completely and then that'll basically leave behind that waxy coat and I'll come back in and buff everything up and it'll look really nice. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. This has just turned out really well. I'm really happy with this leather sheath. It's just definitely, uh, maybe the best one that I think I've ever made. And just taking the time and effort and putting some kind of extra care and love into it just turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. 
Uh, I will be making a custom fire steel that's going to match the uh, handle as well. So I'll be kind of stacking and gluing in a new fire steel into a matching, uh, matching handle for the handle of the fire steel. So if you're interested in seeing that video, maybe let me know in the comments. Uh, either way, I'll put pictures of it up on my Instagram or in YouTube community so you can see it there. Um, and the fit is just really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. Fits in really well, nice and tight, so that the wet molding of the sheath just turned out perfectly. So that's just the key. You want to make sure that your sheath is holds your knife really well. You could shake this up and up up and down all day long. And this fit is beautiful. And again, that wet molding just turned out really beautiful. So I'm happy with that. So we really appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you don't forget to give us that thumbs up and like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, there's we do lots of fun videos, lots of different stuff. So, you know, subscribe and you can go back and see some of our other knife uh, videos, another sheath video as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a really cool day in the shop and we'll see you guys on the next one. Come on. Come on.